Good afternoon, Emmanuel Brinklow. We are so sorry for this unprecedented delay. We've had incredible technology issues today, but this still is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now, we're going to swiftly get through some of our critical announcements because we want to get to the word. The most important part of our worship service today is that Dr. Van Dion Griffin is going to preach God's word to us. So we want to get to the word as quickly as possible. So listen carefully to these few announcements and please pay attention to all other announcements that are on our social media platforms. As you know, tomorrow begins the Allegheny East Camp Meeting. It will be virtual from tomorrow through Friday. On next Sabbath, uh, July 2nd, is the in-person camp meeting experience at the Allegheny East uh, Pine Forge uh, campsite, which means for Emmanuel Brinklow, there will be no service recorded or in person here on next Sabbath. All of our focus would be on the in-person camp meeting at the Allegheny East, or you could watch the camp meeting virtually uh, on next Sabbath. So no service, no in-person service at all coming from the Emmanuel Brinklow Church on next Sabbath. We also want to remind you uh, that on tomorrow there we have the grocery grab and go and as you know we always need support. Individuals have come to be a part of that and at one o'clock tomorrow is our church picnic. Our church picnic will be right here Across the street on the East Campus that starts at 1 p.m. tomorrow, the Emmanuel Brinklow Church Picnic. Please come for that. And finally, I want to say that for many of us, we're just getting back uh, from Lexington, Kentucky, where our own Dr. Ivan Williams, the North American Division Ministerial Director, put on a phenomenal call conven convention for over 6,000 people, over 5,000 pastors were there. And um, you saw some of the pictures of those of us who he asked to participate in the call convention. So uh, we're just getting back from that experience. It was a phenomenal experience. And I want you all to be proud of our own Dr. Ivan Williams, who brought over 5,000 pastors throughout the North American division together for the call convention. It was a, an a extraordinary event. If you weren't there, you missed uh, Pastor Washington preached a powerful sermon there. Uh, Van Dion Griffin, who will be speaking today, ran an incredible youth program. He baptized individuals, uh, just some incredible things that were taking place. Other individuals participated in seminars and workshops from our church and we just praise God for an exciting time that we had there in Lexington, Kentucky in the call convention. Well, those are my announcements for today. Please pay attention to all other announcements on the social platforms and after prayer by Dr. Ivan Williams, then we'll go to the word coming to us from our own Dr. Van Dion Griffin. Uh, he has going to bring a word from the Lord today and we want you to hear God's word. Dr. Williams, God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Medley, and good morning, brothers and sisters. Where there is delay, thank God in prayer, God is only a breath away. And so I'm going to ask that you will join us. Pastor Medley mentioned the called convention. You can watch it on YouTube by going to nadpastorsconvention.com, watch live. That's nadpastorsconvention. Dot com watch live it's time for prayer prayer is never seasonal prayer is always available and prayer is always relevant in my life what about yours join me as we pray and seek the lord this morning eternal father what a privilege we have to take everything to you in prayer and this morning we come with our praises and our thanksgivings and our understandings that you have been working for our good. Even when we don't see you working, by faith we believe that you are working. Thank you for your promises in your word. Thank you that you are working for our good. And today 
we just want to say thank you for Sabbath and thank you for Jesus. As we bow our heads today, we ask that you will enter into our hearts anew as we renew our vows. I pray today, Lord, that that person that the enemy has taken their joy away from, that you will restore the joy of your salvation in their hearts. Father, today as the sun shines outside, may your son, Jesus, our Savior, shine from the inside out. We thank you today that you are still a healing God, and we ask that you will continue to be with those who are sick and shut in among us. We continue to lift up the Adams family right now and pray for coverage of healing, of grief and loss. Uh, even the Van Putten family, all related. We just ask that you will hold them up in the care and in the palm of your hand. Bless them with the spirit of renewed um, uh, vows to you. And may they know soon that one day these tears will be permanently dried away. Bless all of those who've lost recently. And I pray today, dear God, that you will be with our young, our old, our, our working, our retired. Bless our church family, Lord. And I pray that the commitment to serve will never wane because of the times. Whether it's the pandemic, whether it's social injustice, whether it's the Supreme Court changing its minds on things. Lord, we can celebrate today. That you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and your word never changes. Thank you for being our consistency. Thank you for being our provider. Thank you for being our God, even in times of uncertainty. And so today, I pray for the preacher of the hour. Bless him as he opens your word, because Lord... <laughs> We still need a word from you. And so use him today to bless us as he deals with a messy situation. Thank you, God, that you can even handle that. And bless him as he brings the word. And may we have the word enter into our hearts today. And Lord, as we close this afternoon, I just ask that you will walk with us and that you will talk with us. Help us to be in tune with your spirit. Forgive us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and bless your people once again. In Jesus' name, amen.
Wow, what a joy to be in the house of the Lord on this Sabbath morning. And uh, we are so thankful uh, that God has given us one more opportunity um, to be in his presence. What a joy it is to be with you. And uh, because of the, the time that um, we are under the time constraints, we're going to get right to the word of God this afternoon. And so if you would go with me to the book of Luke, Luke is the book. Luke chapter 13, and I want to read a few of the verses there. Luke is the book. Luke chapter 13, and I'm going to read a few of the verses there. I cannot wait on you, but by the time you get there, I should still be there. All right, Luke chapter 13, and I'm starting with verse 6, reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And here's what the word of the Lord says. He spake also this parable. A certain man, I wish you, you would just drop uh, those two words in the chat with me this morning. It helps me to know you're with me. The Bible says a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. You ought to drop none in the, in the chat right now. I see you on YouTube. Drop none. Then, verse 7, he said unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and here it is again, and find none find none, cut it down, the Bible says, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it. And verse 9, as we conclude, if it bear fruit, well, and if not, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. You see the title of our time together found here in these few verses. We want to talk about a messy, a messy situation. Let's Let's talk to Jesus. Father, this is not my moment, but this is your moment. These are not my people, but these people belong to you. And so, Lord, since you are in charge of it all, we want to hear from you. Speak to us and speak through us. And we'll be careful to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. A messy situation. I must admit that uh, I will have to give you the Griff notes today uh, because of the sake of time. But, but if it were not uh, for the time, we would have a little more time to share. But I'll share the Griff notes and then we'll connect again uh, un under this subject, a messy situation. But from the very onset, Dr. Washington, from the very beginning, Dr. Metley and Dr. Williams, I, I want to establish uh, from the very beginning that this text helps us to see a few people. The, uh, the text helps us to see from the very beginning, uh, as we establish a few things, that the vineyard owner is represented by God. Represented by whom, everybody? God. The vineyard owner is represented by God. The vineyard dresser is represented by Jesus. Represented by whom, everybody? Jesus, the vineyard, is represented by the church, and the fig tree represents you and I. I'll say it again real quick, Dr. Williams. The vineyard owner is represented by God, and the vineyard dresser is represented by Jesus. The vineyard is represented 
represented by the brink, I mean, represented by the church, and uh, the fig tree is represented by you and I. Get the picture very quickly as we r rush through this time together. Uh, the, the, the vineyard owner is making his way down New Hampshire. I mean, he's making his way down the road to the vineyard because inside of the vineyard is a fig tree. Y'all missed it, so I'll say it again. The vineyard owner who's represented by God is making his way down the road to the vineyard because inside the vineyard is a fig tree. Did y'all hear what I just said? Now, I'm not into horticulture. I'm not an arborist. I don't know a whole lot about plants and trees, but what I do know, Dr. Williams, is that you don't find a fig tree in a vineyard. Are y'all listening to me? But the vineyard owner, the Bible makes it clear, is making his way down to the vineyard, church family, because inside of the vineyard is a fig tree. Tree. And I, I began to race through my mind, why in the world would a fig tree be in a, vi in a vineyard? That's where you have these huge palatial sweet grapes. In, in a vineyard, you don't find a fig tree. Why in the world would the vineyard owner have a fig tree planted in a vineyard. And as I began to look behind the epidermis of the text, it became very clear to me that the reason why a fig tree that has no business in a vineyard is there because Jesus decided to plant it there. Oh, I wish I had somebody up in here. That the fig tree is there because Jesus decided because he's God. Because Jesus decided because he's divine. Because Jesus decided because he's all powerful to put a fig tree in a vine. And the good news for somebody who is listening right now, the good news for somebody who is hearing the word of God is this, that God can plant anybody anywhere he chooses because he's God. Huh? Is there anybody besides me that can at least say thank you, Jesus? Drop it in the chat. Help the preacher out a little bit. Because you're so thankful that you are planted in a place that you probably have no business being planted, but because Jesus planted you there, can you know, somebody is driving a car that you should not be driving. Somebody living in a house that you should not be living. Somebody is working on a job you're not that quiet qualified to hold down, but because Jesus planted you there, can't no demon in hell pluck you out. The reason the fig tree is in the vineyard is because Jesus decided to plant it there. And I know I have at least two or three witnesses that's thankful today to know you're planted in some places that you should not be planted, but because he put you there, nobody can take you out. I love this text as I rush uh, with the griff notes. Y'all pray with me. But I love it because what the, the vineyard owner decides to do is make his way down to the vineyard. Because inside of Emmanuel Brinklow Seventh-day Adventist Church, he has his fig tree. Uh, uh, he has the, it planted there to make sure that it gets the right kind of water supply, to make sure that it gets the right kind of sunlight, to make sure that it has the right kind. Are y'all listening to me out there? He planted it there to make sure that it had every, hear the preacher, it had everything it needed. Y'all see my shirt? To grow. I wish I had some help in here. <laughs> Uh, he wanted to make sure that this fig tree had every single thing it 
it needed in order to grow. He planted it there to get the right kind of sunlight. He planted it there to get the right kind of soil. He planted it there to make sure it got the right kind of water supply. Because what he is trying to do is get some fruit out of his tree. And so what he decides to do is, uh, what he decides to do, Nathan, is he decides to take good care of his tree. Are y'all listening to me? What he decides, Langston, is he wants to make, take care of the tree that he has personally planted. And so he wants to make sure he gets everything it needs to be. Can I just tell you that that's what Christ does for you and I? He puts us in places to make sure we get the right kind of sunlight, to make sure we get the right kind of water supply, to make sure we get the right kind of soil. All he's trying to do is make sure he can get some fruit out of our lives and so he puts us in places that we probably shouldn't be to make sure we produce for his kingdom he's taking good care of this tree he's making sure that it has everything and can I just take one quick exit even in my rush for the griff notes and say to you that he's taking good care of you and I can we just testify for at least 12 seconds about the goodness of Jesus and how good he's been in our lives, how good he takes care of, our, uh, of his children, how good we look, although we've been through some tough times. He knows how to take good care of his children. I, I started going through the memory index of my, uh, index of my life, uh, Dr. Washington, and I could not help but get overwhelmed about the goodness of Jesus. Why in the world would he be so good to this fig tree? Can I, can I just say that you all have the same testimony even though you may be too arrogant to admit it? Why in the world would he be so good to that fig tree and this fig tree and this fig tree? And we can only testify and say, Lord, thank you for your goodness. But now he's good to us and all he's looking for out of our lives is some fruit. Can you see him now? Uh, he's making his way down. <laughs> I'm talking about a messy situation. He's making his way down uh, to Brinklow, I mean to the vineyard because inside of the vineyard he has a fig tree planted. <laughs> it's not just any fig tree, it's his fig tree. He planted it himself. And as he's making his way, Dr. Williams, down to the vineyard, what he learns from a, from a distance is that the tree looks like it is productive. What he discovers as he's making his way closer uh, to the vineyard is that his fig tree looks like it has fruit. It, its leaves are huge and healthy. Its, its branches seem to be weighed down with apparent fruit. But, but, but as he gets closer, he notices that what he saw from a distance is not real reality. And the truth is, for you and I, from a distance, it's possible for us to look like we're productive. It's, it's possible from a distance for you and I to look like we're fruitful. From, from a distance, we look like we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. From, from a distance, we look like we have regular devotional time with him. From, from a distance, it looks like we have a great prayer life. From, from a distance, it looks like... We spend time in the Word and studying the Sabbath school lesson. But when you get close, when the rubber meets the road, as, uh, as the old elder would say, when, when you're between the, the devil and the deep blue sea, as the other preacher would say, when you come close to people and their situations, you realize that they look like they have fruit, but they have none. So God, he makes his way 
Oh, come on. Just if you, if you give me 10 minutes, drop in the chat 10 minutes. Give me 10 minutes. I, I promise I'll wrap it up and we'll come back for a part two. I like how God, he makes his way down to the vineyard because inside, Doc Medley, the vineyard is his fig tree that he planted himself to make sure it got good sunlight. Come on, say sunlight. To make sure it had good soil. Come on, say good soil. To make sure it had good water supply. Come on, say water supply. He planted it there to make sure that it had all of the elements to be a fruitful Christian. I mean, a fruitful tree. And when he gets inside of the vineyard, he comes close to his tree and he begins to investigate the life of the tree. He, he opens the leaves only to discover no fruit. After all of the water supply, after, after all of the, of the sunlight, after all of the good soil, when he gets to his tree and, and it looks healthy and it's, and it's acting healthy and it's looking like it's producing, when he opens up the leaves of his tree, he discovers no fruit. And it's a tragedy. Yeah, I, I said tragedy. It's a tragedy for you and I. Notice I didn't say you. For you and I to look like we're healthy Christians only to discover we have no fruit. Christ is, God is trying to grow something in you and I. Oh, I wish y'all were listening to me. He's trying desperately to grow something in you and I and he cannot get growth out of us because we're full of everything else except him. See the tree. It is full of leaves, but it has no savior. It's full of confusion, but no confession. It's full of hate, but no holiness. Full of leaves, but it has no fruit. It's clear on the 28 fundamental beliefs. It will argue you down about the, the veracity of the Sabbath. It will actually go into great, the great despair to make sure you understand that it's right and you're wrong. But at the end of the day, it still has no fruit. And what God does is he walks into this vineyard. Uh, I know y'all tired of me repeating it, but I just have to repeat it to deepen it. He walks into Emmanuel Brinklow knowing that he himself planted the tree there. Knowing that it should not be in a vineyard, but because he can do whatever he wants to, he places it there anyhow, and he gives it everything to be successful and yet no fruit and I like how he says it in Luke chapter 13 I'm almost done the Bible says in Luke 13 uh, verse 7 then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard behold <laughs> these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none cut it down I mean get it now oh yes he's a God full of grace y'all y'all mad at me already but that's all right oh yes he's a God full of mercy and a God full of love but he says I've been coming looking Doc Medley for some fruit from these Christians at Brinkler I've been coming uh, these three years looking for some fruit Doc Williams looking for something that says you are actually growing in Jesus Christ and when I get here I find nothing my only response God says is to cut it down oh yes he's he's a God who makes a way y'all y'all mad at me but that's all right oh yes he's a God that makes a way out of no way oh yes he's a God 
God that opened doors that no man can shut. Oh yes, he's a God who shuts doors that no man can up open. But at a certain point in the Christian experience, when God says, I've given you everything to be productive and you choose not to, his appropriate response is, cut it down. I've labored, <laughs> I've worked, I've, I've tarried, I've, I've done all I can to make sure that this tree is successful and I find nothing there. He says, I want it down. I, I, the judgment, I need you to hear me on this family, the judgment is real. There is coming a day and time, not long from now, where God will actually look at you and I. Notice I didn't say you. Look at you and I if we choose not to produce for his kingdom, if we choose not to bear fruit for his glory, he will look at you and I and say out, and say out of love, cut it down. Vineyard owner who was represented by God. I know it's bad English, but it's going to get gooder. Come on, say amen. Uh, it's going to get gooder. Come on, say amen. Uh, the vineyard who was represented by God. He finally gets to the point where he says, I've been coming here for three years and I can't find anything. He says, I want the tree down. I want it down immediately God why why do you why do you want this tree down well he tells us in Luke chapter 13 verse 7 part B of the text says this he says cut it down why cumbereth it the ground I love that word uh, cumbereth uh, Dr. Williams it comes from the Greek word cartageo come on say amen everybody say cartageo yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Carter Gale, I, I paid $50,000 for that at Oakwood. Y'all got it for free. Come on, say amen. What Carter Gale literally means is, why is it so completely and utterly useless that it's simply holding up space? And so what God says is, I've been coming, help me God, to this tree for three years, hoping and expecting by now it would have some fruit. <clears throat> he says, I've given it good soil. I've given it good water supply. I've given it good sunlight. And yet it has nothing. Cut it down. Why do you want it down, God? It's just holding up space. Is coming on first and third Sabbath to take its same posture. It's, it's coming week in and week out, repeating the same cycle. Nothing exciting and brand new. Nothing cutting edge. Nothing that declares the glory of the Lord is on its life. It's just happy holding up space. It will actually get to the point where it will actually argue with others who sit in its space. And God says, this tree is complete. I've given it good water supply. Y'all listening to me? I've given it good sunlight. I've given it good soil. And yet, it is not fruitful. His biggest challenge, Dr. Washington, is this false advertisement. And God is saying to those of us who profess to be seven-day advantages, I said it's seven-day advantages. He said, I am tired of your false advertisement. I'm not impressed with you saying, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. I'm not impressed with your knowledge of man when he dies, he, he doesn't go straight to heaven. He rests in the grave. I'm not impressed uh, with the fact that the second coming of Jesus Christ is a literal real coming. His feet will not touch the ground. He says, I know you know all of that, but do you know me? My challenge is I cannot deal with false advertisement. 
Since I've been coming here three years, what, what you have to understand, I'm done, because I see myself going on until tomorrow. <laughs> what you have to understand is, he says, Dr. Medley, I've been coming here three years, trying to get some, some fruit from this tree. He says, and I can't find anything. And I love this because when God pronounces judgment on the tree, then the vineyard dresser begins to speak up. Come on, say amen. The vineyard dresser is represented by Jesus. And Jesus says to God himself, he says, let it alone this year also. Oh, I don't know about anybody else, but that's good news to me. Because what Jesus is saying is, even though there is judgment on the tree, even though the tree should come down, Jesus decides he wants to go to bat for the tree because the tree still has value. And you and I need to understand that we are so valuable to Jesus, even in our unproductive state, that Jesus is willing to go to bat for us. He says, let it alone this year also so I can dig about it. I love this because a tree was not prepared to produce fruit, Doc Washington, until it was at least three years old. Y'all stay with me. I'm almost done. It was not prepared to produce fruit until it was at least three years old. God says, I've been coming these three years. In other words, in the first three years of the tree's existence, God didn't even bother it. He understood that it was a babe. It was just getting started. That's why he gave it good sunlight, good water supply, uh, good soil. Because in his first, first three years, he knew it was just developing. So he did not bother it the first three years. But these last three years, he says, I've been coming, which is six years. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. And when he gets to year six and sees that there is no fruit, he wants it down. But Jesus, in his infinite mercy, Jesus, who's so full of grace, he says, leave it alone this year also, which is year number seven. I wish I had some help in here. And it's the year uh, that he wants to give him one more year so that it can act actually produce for his glory and I'm looking for at least two or three witnesses who will ex be excited with me who says God I thank you that you're the God not of a second chance but you're the God of another chance come on say amen he says give it one more year he says and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig about it and I'm gonna dunk it <laughs> oh yeah, see, during that time, farmers didn't have the sophisticated equipment that you and I enjoy today. They didn't have wheelbarrows and shovels. And so they would have to go out to the pasture and they would have to get some fertilizer. Uh, you, you, you know what fertilizer is. The, the Bible calls it dung. Come on, say amen. And they would go out there without the sophisticated tools that you and I enjoy and they would get the manure. They would get the dung with their hands. It, it's a messy situation, but they would get the dung and they would bring it back to an unfruitful tree and get down on their knees and pack the dung, the fertilizer around the roots of the tree so that it can in fact become productive. As messy and as stinky as it is, uh, the, uh, the vineyard dresser is not ashamed or afraid to put his hands on the mess because he knows it's the mess that's going to get the growth out of that tree's life. And I'm looking for at least two or three witnesses who may find themselves in a messy situation. But the good news is the vineyard dresser's hand is all over the mess. And what he's trying to do is get some fruit out of our lives. Christ has not called us to sit on New Hampshire to take care of us. He's called us on this part of the vineyard to produce for his kingdom, even though it's a messy situation. The good news is, family, he still has his hands all over the mess. And I just want to pause and thank him right now. I'm done. For the stuff 
that seems to be in my life that is so messy. But I also thank God that his hands is still on me. Even in a mess. Anybody like that today that just want to thank him? You're in a messy situation. You're in a messy marriage. You got some messy stuff on your job. You got some messy children. You, you've got some messy stuff going on. The good news is, even in your messy situation, God still has his hands on us. And he has one goal. And out of all of that mess that is around the tree, he's still going to get some glory out of our lives. Father, we find ourselves in a messy situation today. I mean, the sound is messy. The production seems to be messy. Our lives seem to be in a mess. But the good news is, you still have your hand all over our mess. And your desire, while we're in good soil, your desire, while we're getting good water supply, your desire, while we're getting good sunlight, is to get some fruit out of our lives. Grow us from this day forward. Keep us planted in your vineyard. And by your grace, we will produce for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you today. God bless you today. My, my, my. What a word. What a word. Mm -hmm. Dr. Griffin, I understand why the devil was delaying us mm -hmm. because you had something to say to all of us. Mm -hmm. And we praise God for today's message. When you were concluding with that messy situation, mm -hmm. not only was I thinking about us, me, our lives, mm -hmm. I was thinking about some of the decisions that the Supreme Court made this mm -hmm. week Rovers. that created a messy situation. Uh, all over again. But to know that God's hand, yes, sir. that God is still leading and guiding, and God is willing to get in our mess, uh, that was just a powerful, powerful message. Thank you. Thank you for allowing God to use you in preaching this message, a messy situation. What do you think, Pastor? I'm just, I never thought of Jesus planting the fig tree. Mm -hmm. That's where I still am. I, mm -hmm. I, I just praise God that it is the Lord of our lives who puts us where he wants us. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm stuck on, mm -hmm. Benion. Thank you. Yeah. To God be the glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there, there, there's, there's so many of us, but I'll just talk about me. And I, I look back at situations that I'm in, and uh, they don't look so good. <laughs> but then I realized that the only reason why I am where I am in any of those situations is because God planted me there. Yeah. And so I don't have to qualify why I'm there. He qualified me to be there. You know? And I but, think that's where, where many of us are. And, 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 and man, I tell you, it's, it's the Lord's doing. That's what I hear you mm -hmm. saying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as I reflect on your message, um, I'm, I'm, I'm also... Uh, riveted to the fact that of all of the people that Jesus is quote unquote hardest on mm -hmm. are those who give false advertisement. Mm. The Pharisees, he called them empty sepulchers. Yes, yes. Uh, the people who go through the motions mm -hmm. but bear no fruit. Um, man, that, that speaks to my heart today that we can go through the motions mm -hmm. of being a Christian. Mm -hmm. But Jesus wants our hearts. That's what he really wants. Oh, I, th I think that's awesome. Awesome. Con, thank you for bringing that up. You also brought the fact that not only, again, that God planned us and the expectation, but when God did the examination, there was no fruit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. That was a painful reminder mm -hmm. of the form of godliness, but denying the power yeah. thereof. Yeah. And it also speaks to the fact, and Pastor, I've heard you say this before. That we don't judge people, mm -hmm. but we can be fruit inspectors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when Jesus went to inspect the fruit yeah. mm -hmm. that we were positioned to produce mm -hmm. and did not produce it, mm -hmm. that's a powerful message that God planted us. God has given us everything to be productive mm -hmm. and fruitful. But when he comes to look for the fruit, there's nothing. There's nothing. Oh, Lord, help us. Help us all. You know, man, what, I like how scholars weighed in heavy on, on this portion. And they say that 
the tree looked like it had fruit, but it was very noisy. <laughs> so that if it in fact had fruit, you would hear no noise from it. Because a tree that is fruitless is just a tree full of leaves making noise. My, my, my. <laughs> I hope you all heard that. And so so you telling me yeah. that the more noise a tree makes, mm, the less that, fruit it has. The less fruit it has. Yes, yes sir. And we've got some, no notice I said we, I say you, we've got some noisy people. Yes, um, yes. Uh, and it's simply because they don't have fruit. Wow. Mercy. That's it. So you make Mercy. the most noise when you have the least fruit. Oh, praise God. Praise God for that word today. And I hope, I hope you're hearing this because there's so much to unpack in the word today, not only now, but when you share this with someone else and you tell somebody, listen, you need to hear today's word. And when you have your Sabbath dinners and your conversations about today's word, I, I pray that it will speak to us and, and remind us that God planted us but God expects fruit from us. That's what he's looking for. Uh, and uh, I just can't thank you enough. Can I transition just a minute? Because again, mm -hmm. the word was so powerful today. And uh, um, not only, and I thank you for speaking to us in this turbulent time which we're living in. Mm -hmm. It's good to know that God still has an expectation for us individually. We can't run from that. That's we true. can't even let the circumstances, the political climate, the where it is yeah. today mm -hmm. to get us off track to still what God expects from us. But at some point, when you're talking about this messy situation, mm -hmm. and I know you got part two to a messy situation, <laughs> at some point, I, I know that, you, that you're going to come back and talk about the messy situation that God's people live in in America because of the mess of this week. Yeah, and I think we'll be yes. remiss if we don't not only keep our so. eyes on Jesus, mm -hmm. yeah. but look at the signs that are taking place and especially this landmark decision that was overturned. Do you know the last two um, Supreme Court justices lied? Mm, they said in their confirmation they said that it. Roe versus Wade was a done decision. Did they not? Mm. They said it. Mm. They said it and lied. Mm -hmm. so, so I think that there are some real issues and I would like for uh, not only you, and when you preach part two of a messy situation, mm -hmm. to touch this issue, but bring up some of our, our legal minds. Uh, we have one of them here working behind the camera yes. uh, today. We need Absolutely. to bring these individuals up and let them give us context uh, to where we are in the messy situations that which we are living in today. How do you go from allowing guns, concealed weapons, to be carried? Mm-hmm to then overturning Roe versus Wade. One day, you know, this like whiplash taking place politically uh, in, in our country now. So I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna throw it back over to you to close it out. Yo, yeah, and I, I'll just say this in, in closing as far as I'm, um, my remarks re regarding this. You know, I, I think, um, church family, um, there, are, there are a lot of hurting people this morning. Um, yesterday, when you just, you cannot deny what is happening to the hearts of people. And there are people in our churches, you know, uh, you know, if you just pay attention to social media, I'm looking at friends of mine yeah. who are saying, if you knew my story, mm. you know, and we have people in our churches who have stories um, that, that are heart wrenching. And yesterday's decision said to these people and those to come that they don't matter to anybody but a gun matters more. And uh, I think we, you know, we're, we're in a messy situation. We're in a messy situation. And the only hope we have is that God still has his hands on us. He still has his Amen. hands on us. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that. And again, we all can unpack this. Uh, we will circle back after camp meeting. Uh, these, this issue, this critical issues that we're dealing with, uh, as you know, our church not only do we believe that God has called us and God's hand is upon us, but part of that also is our social activism in the, in the church, from the pulpit to what we do in community. At Emmanuel Brinklow, there is no disconnect between spirituality and social activism. The way some church leaders divide them, here at Emmanuel Brinklow, we embrace them. They are one and the same Amen. in God's church here at Emmanuel Brinklow. Yeah. Yeah. 
So let us prepare to, to pray. Doc Williams, you, you prayed once. You probably got to pray because, you, know, you know, I'm getting worked up. So I need you to pray for us. <laughs> All you're doing is repeating Micah 6, 8. He hath shown the old man what is good yes. and what is just and what the Lord require of you to do justly, love to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Let's bow our heads today. Father, we thank you for the word this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you have spoken clearly that you want us to be people who live fruitful lives. And so bless us this week as we um, fertilize the ground where we are planted. Help us to spend time with you and then share that good news with others. Bless us, God, as we leave this service today, but never from your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray until we meet again. Amen and amen. God bless you.